morning, meet YouTubers. This is Lady Grave Dancer, and I am I am a sub host here on Witches of the Moon. And this week was on Q and A questions, and I have the questions here. I printed them. I haven't exactly read them. I went through and I copied and pasted them because I wanted to be kind of like fresh when I read them. So, so I'm gonna do. I hope this isn't too loud. Okay. Hopefully, it's not too loud. I like having music in the background. It makes it more interesting. Okay, so the first question is, how long does it take you to plan a ritual? That's a very good question. It depends on the ritual. I am currently working on one and I've been working on it for about two weeks now because I'd like for the things just to come to mind. You know, I don't like to overthink it and you know, just to throw something out there. So it's been sometimes, um, making a ritual can take me even months if I know I'm gonna plan a big one coming then I'll plan a big one and I will take my time with it I keep a notebook it's over there I keep this yellow notebook with me and that's where I will write things down as you know if a spell comes to mind or or something to add to a spell or to change a spell or something like that and the same it goes for rituals so I've been where I wrote a ritual on the spot and was ready to do it right away and then I've been where it takes me a long time or it takes me hours days it just it really depends on the ritual itself okay next question tell us something odd weird about yourself that very few people know about like do you save your toenail clippings um, do peep shows for extra cash or like the smell of armpits um, let me see I don't like the smell of armpits, but uh, I think a lot of people don't know that I'm a real big tomboy because I love makeup and doing my nails, but I'm a huge tomboy. I'm the first one that will climb a tree and break a nail and, and think it's funny. I like to um, pull pranks on people. I love pranking people. I think it's funny. And um, whatever I dish out, I can definitely take back. Um, oh, I ever since I was pregnant with my first kid, and I don't think hardly anybody knows this, I like to eat um, Snickers candy bars, and I like to dip them in Frito-Lay bean dip. Oh my God, it's so good. Like Everybody's probably like, eh, gross, but you should try it, because it's really, really, really good. Um, I think I'm pretty much an open book. That um, I'm an oddball anyway, so that's kind of a... Um, it's a long range question for Next me. Question. Let's see. Oh, wait, before I move on. I also like to do meditation in the buff. So most of my meditation I, I do is actually in the bathroom because I don't know, I just like being butt ass naked and, and meditating. And I keep shaking the camera. Okay. Next is you were raised in as you were raised as a witch and often talk about your grandmother being in the craft, what is something um, she taught you and that you still incorporate into your practice today? I guess I would have to say, I guess I would have to say maybe the um, tarot readings is something that I took with me. But see, I think that's more of a hereditary thing because my great grandmother read playing cards and I read tarot cards. They're, I mean, spells and stuff like that I take with me, I still use. There was, you know, for the most part, it was like stay you know, going back to my great grandmother on this one. And I would have to say the one with um, if it feels right, then do it. You always go with your gut. And that's something that I've always practiced and I always felt. And I've always uh, shared that along with everybody else, along with my children. If it feels right, do it. Not just in the practice, but in everything in life, area, every area of life. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Next question What is your biggest witchy pet peeve i would have to say at this point you know my biggest pet peeve is people who think that their path is the only way to go and are very judgmental toward others i think that we need to be open to everybody's path it might not be for us but not judge so much that is a real big issue of mine just because you do it don't mean that i have to do it just because you use green for money spells don't mean i have to use green for money spells those are things that irritate me that I purposely do opposite of what people tell me just to prove that they'll still work. Yeah, that's a whole other video. All right, the next question. This is concerning, this is concerning my outside ritual space um, at my new house. Do I feel it the need to cleanse the outdoor spaces? Why or why not? 
Well, of course, when we first made it, we did because, you know, we don't know who lived there and anything like that. But I pretty much keep a bubble around my ritual area. So depending on what I'm working, if I am working a type of darker magic and, and calling in and stuff that you may not want around later, then I'll do a cleanse after. But I don't feel a need to do it every single time because I do keep it bubbled and sacred. So, yeah, I love that space. Oh my gosh, I love that space. It's just every time I go out there to do something, it's um, it's dark and I can't record and show anything. So I need to get on the ball on daytime stuff. But yeah, that's it. If you were to create a TV show about witchcraft, what would you name it and what would be in your first show? Um, which has gone wild? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I don't know, I, I really like the name of my shop, you know, The Binding Witches, and I think I would probably make some kind of TV show showing the connection some witches have and the connection some witches don't have and how different that we all are. Kind of like what we're doing on The Witches View, bringing all these different witches in to communicate about what we agree and disagree about, showing that it's okay for us not to agree. I think mostly to show the diversity that, that is okay within the community because a lot of people don't think it's okay. okay next question how excited are you for this Salem trip for those of you who don't know there's a big bunch of us which is heading to Salem for uh, Samhain this year I have already bought my plane tickets so I am super duper excited um, I'm rooming with Sunshine Morning Ray who's already reserved the room and we're just waiting I just I, I can't even explain how excited I am to go do this Okay, next question. If you could have a real magical power, what would it be and why? I would think I would like to be able to move things. I think that would be pretty cool just to be able to, you know, move stuff. You know, if I don't feel like getting up and picking up my cup. Well, it's not a cup. It's my mug. If I don't feel like getting up and picking it up, I could just, you know, I guess to be lazy or whatever. But, you know, because if you move stuff, then you can float and then you can move around. I just think that's a real cool ability. I know a lot of people probably would refer, prefer to be able to read the minds. But if I can read the minds of people, I would have zero friends. And I know that because we all do some kind of shit talking at one point or another. What is your favorite memory is the next question. And I actually have three that top on top of each other. There is... Um, they're equal. All three memories are equal, and that was the birth of my children. I never been happier than the day that I got to look in the eyes of my boys. So I got three awesome memories that are equal in value and the best memories that I have. What is the most ridiculous thing anyone has ever said to you about your religion? <laughs> uh, about my practice? Gosh, I did a whole video on stupid stuff people say to people. So many... Maybe the dumbest one was probably, God, I mean, they're all, there's so many dumb ones. Let's see, what is the most ridiculous one? I mean, there's so many, I, I've been asked, you know, if I'm sexual with demons or with Satan and I've, I can say, okay, this was this might not be what you're talking about but to me this was the most ridiculous question ever asked to me and it was from my brother who is christian he asked me one day i mean he's christian mind you he said but you're not teaching that shit to your kids right and i i asked him i said um are you teaching the bible to your children do you teach your kids about christ well of course i do you know is what he said so how are you going to ask me of course i'm not making my kids learn this but yes i am incorporating this into their life so yes they do know all about this practice i don't shove it down their throat like he does with the christian part but i do yes teach my kids do i make them practice no but do i teach them what i do yes i do so for me that was a really stupid question and i think that's on the ridiculous level because you know why is it you get to teach your bible but i can't teach my practice it doesn't make sense so that's going to be right there question do you think your children will follow in your beliefs after they have left the nest? If not, why? And there's two parts to this question, and I'll answer the second part in a minute. Um, you know, with the fact that my middle son is Christian, and he still is to this day, 
I figure that's the way he'll always be, but I know being raised in my house, he's always going to be open to other people's beliefs and not judgmental. So, in a way, he is carrying some of my teachings with him. Uh, my oldest, yeah, I think he'll incorporate it in his life as he grows up. You know, he isn't a practitioner to the point that I am, but he still does stuff almost daily. So... He may say he's not into this or into that, but I see what I see. And he's already going to be 19, so I really think he will incorporate it into his life. My youngest one, I do think so. Uh, I think he's going to be a Catholic witch. I really do. He really is into what his father's into as far as being Catholic, but he's also very into what um, I do. The second part of the question is, who taught you to drive? Apparently, I am a horrible driver. And my grandmother is one who taught me to drive, and <laughs> she's been to defensive driving in the last few years about three times. It says, if you were given the option to talk to a famous witch, male or female, dead or alive, who would it be, and what would be the first question? I don't really have a famous witch that I would just love to talk to. Um, but I can name a dead witch that I would love to talk to, and that would be my three great-grandmothers back. I would love, and, and actually, if you go out to um, Paris, Texas, she was pretty popular, so I guess that could be considered famous to a degree, at least out there with the country folk it is. I don't really have a famous witch that I would want to talk to that I could think of. I mean, there'd be some cool ones to meet, but, you know, not so much. I'd, I'd rather talk to my ancestors to see where our our path has come from more information to help me on my way and my first question would be would be oh goodness the first question uh -huh. probably how difficult was it being a witch during that time for our family being in such a small town question what was your freakiest deja vu moment um, this kind of goes back to my um, most precious memory when I had each of my kids when I looked at each of them each time there was a deja vu with all three of them and I found that very strange because I didn't plan any of those pregnancies at all so that that may not be like freakiest like oh I pictured my eye deja vu ooh, I'm naked standing here but that was weird because I didn't plan my pregnancies and then to have a deja vu when I look at them it's like, wow, you know? So, that that's for me. Um, I think that's all the questions. I hope this video isn't too long. But, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I look forward to doing more videos like this in the future. All right, guys, I'm at work and lunch is over. People are walking in. So, I will see you at the next video. Um, thanks for watching and blessed be. Bye.